And now, instead of going for another Wraith Band, he's going for the Band of Elven Skin. This will give him fast access to Power Treads, but at the same time also giving him 6 Agility. He's actually trying to kill the Axe here, which is kind of surprising, because if the Axe maybe spin once or twice more, he might have taken a lot of damage, but he does have the 11 Magic Wand charges, right? Oh. guys we got today a phantom assassin replay a guide to pretty much pa i've been playing a lot of phantom assassin especially in the earlier days when i started playing dota again i love this hero i think it's super fun to play it can kill people it can farm it can be very active around the map depending on the enemy's aggression and today we're going to be watching silar play phantom assassin this man is one of the most solid carry players in all of dota 2 his replays are perfect to watch when you want to play something solid like a rock that's what salar is when i think of salar i feel like he's the most ideal carry kind of player he doesn't make any rash plays he doesn't overextend he plays very solid every single game so I'll start this game he's playing against axe rubik he's actually going for a magic stick start so this gives him more sustain against these heroes stack up some regen so he's got one tangles so he's gonna bring himself more regen with a courier that's what he will do. Obviously, he's got a Quelling Blade, and he's got three branches. Normally, you see carry players go for two branches to make that into a Magic Stick, but he might use his third branch to tangle up with it. So, safe lane, you can see how he, at the start, he's always, like, pulling the aggro. Doesn't want to really contest against the enemy hero. He doesn't really want to, like, you know, take too much damage. P is a hero who's better once she levels up by just securing herself some creeps. And when she is higher level, she will have more damage output. That's just the nature of this hero, right? Uh, level 1 spamming daggers on the enemy heroes is not going to be super effective. But you can use a few daggers since they do cost a little mana. Just to annoy the enemy by slowing them down and just hurting them. Or allowing your support to combo off your slow and do some right click damage. As you can see, he's always like pulling aggro and trying to secure the creeps the best that he can. Here he used his dagger to pair up with his right click and just have that little bit of extra damage to be able to secure the range creep and he's always asking his support to pull because he doesn't want to fight up the enemy straight up right he just wants xp that's the most important thing for pa in the early levels you just want to get to like level three where you have two levels in dagger uh sometimes you can also go for the blur level two so you can sustain a bit more as some of the hits will be dodged and that's the same as like having some extra regen but in this game, he decides to go for the Phantom Strike. You can go Phantom Strike when you feel like you have kill potential on the enemy. So in this lane, with the Nature's Prophet, he has a lot of kill potential on the Rubik if he wants to. Because of that, he goes for the Phantom Strike build. But ideally, you would like to go for Phantom Strike. But in some situations, when you know there's no kill threat, you, you can just go for the Blur. Here, the Axe is getting very low. But he's still focused on the Lasses. He doesn't want to lose too much HP in this lane. And you can see he brought himself some more regen and also a Wraith Band now. So this will give him a lot of damage, ways to last it better as well in the lane. You can see, as of right now, he hasn't really applied a lot of pressure on the enemy apart from just using his dagger on them. Here the axe went a little bit out of position, he daggers, jumps in, just doing some harass damage and all of a sudden the axe just took way too much damage there and he was able to clean him up, right? You can see he didn't commit into the lane and try to go for any kills until level 3 because going in for kills earlier on might mean that you might just take too much damage and just not be able to farm in the lane anymore. He just He's okay farming under the tower too, right? Like it's not so much damage that he's going to be taking. Level 4 it goes for the blur. The level 2 dagger is like a big power spike for Phantom Assassin. And now, instead of going for another Wraith Band, he's going for the Band of Elven Skin. This will give him fast access to Power Treads, but at the same time also giving him 6 Agility. He's actually trying to kill the Axe here, which is kind of surprising, because if the Axe maybe spin once or twice more, he might have taken a lot of damage, but he does have the 11 Magic Wand charges, right? So he loses a wave to chase down this Axe and kill him off. It does pay off, because getting an Axe kill means the Axe will get a slower Blink Dagger, slower Blame Mail timing. It's very nice him to do that and you can see like the power spike of pa once she is level three without taking too much damage in the earlier levels she has a lot of kill potential in the lane with your support he just keeps going on this axe and daggering him up here he had to use his magic wand so he has to be a bit more careful in the next engagements because he doesn't have that big burst heal that he has brings himself some more regen and he's got boots now he definitely wants to just go for the power shots he even puts a ward for himself in the lane and this allows him to see all the Offlaner supports whoever may come into this lane and he can just back off in that situation. It's a very interesting thing that a lot of carry players don't actually do this. I mean, words are free, right? 
So you can do that for yourself and uh, have vision over your safe lane Illusion. that way. Nice, nah, got himself power treads. It's a very good item. I don't really like phase boots. I would I say phase boots is only good in maybe two out of ten games where you're just more active and trying to kill people. Power treads allows you to tread switch, get more spells out, farm faster even compared to phase boots. And here, just slowly but surely, he doesn't commit into the fight when they have full HP. He always wants to dagger and like make them low. And once they're maybe about 30% health, that's the time he'll jump in. Because you don't want to, if you jump in right away, you will just take too much damage as a Phantom Assassin. And that will make you feel very uncomfortable, especially in the lane. Just farm some neutral, 7 minutes in. He wants to pick up maybe a neutral item for himself. And he just keeps farming bottom. Like, unless you're forced to get out of this lane, you can just stay in the lane, keep farming, and keep farming the big camp as well. It's much better for you if you do that. Now Qual comes bottom, tries to go on him. He's trying to get out, but there's just too many heroes down here. He, he falls. So now we're going to see what he's going to do next after taking so much damage in this bottom lane. Goes to mid lane, pushes that out. And then he'll. this is where we will find him farming a lot of neutral camps. So at this point, with as a PA, you want to spend most of your time farming neutrals. You can always use your blur to farm neutrals, or you can even use your blur to farm ancients. It's a really good thing to do. This game, he can't just go bottom and farm ancients because the enemy has taken over that area. So he's trying to stay around the triangle and pushing out the mid lane constantly. And this gives him a lot of experience, right? And he's going for a battle fury. Battle fury is your general build that uh, most pro. Phantom Assassin players go for. It gives them a lot of damage, good sustain, and also the ability to scale better. Some games you can just go Deso first if you feel like you need to fight earlier and your team is very far behind. But in games where it's like kind of 50-50, you do want to go for the Battle Fury so you have that farming tool. And now he's made his way top, right? So you can see like his farming pattern at this point is going to be like this as a carry. We see a lot of carries always do this path once the top tier 1 tower is dead especially. Because this gives you a lot of farm and also allowing you to farm in a very safe place. Like this is actually the safest place for you to farm after 10 minutes pretty much. And some games even earlier than that. So now he's just spending this time just, you know, getting his battle fury up. He doesn't really want to get into engagements unless he sees on the minimap that the enemy heroes are going out of position. Even secures a bounty or tries to secure a bounty on the top, doesn't really get it. And just pretty much farming uh, these two camps, these three camps, and then the waves top whenever they come. And now he's got Battle Fury, so he's very fast at farming. You can see here, he's level 12 already. So Silar in this game, although his lane bottom got uh, cut short because of the rotations, he was able to catch back up by farming these camps and the top wave and the two camps top as well. And now every time somebody does show up top, he will just back off and just go to a safer, safer farming spot. And now that the enemy is top and his team has secured back his own jungle, he's moved bottom, farmed the Ancients. Ancients give so much farm to the... Phantom Assassin, you can always use your blur to farm ancients so you don't take any damage. It's pretty much your biggest farming spot for this hero. And now the enemy has made their way bottom and he's just avoiding the fights, right? He knows that these are not fights he wants to get into. If the enemy heroes do take a lot of damage from his teammates, he will consider just jumping in. And he's going for a Desolator next, right? This item absolutely amazing for Phantom Assassin. I would say Deso is more core on PA than Battle Fury is. Because it gives you 60 damage for a very cheap amount and also the minus armor where PA is all physical damage. So the minus armor will amplify your damage output. And another way to use your blur is to just not let the enemy see you on the minimap. It's very important to not give any information to him. You see the moment that he actually showed himself top, the enemy starts running after him right away. And this is very scary for him because now he's just going to die because he doesn't have a BKB or anything like that. But that's okay. You really do need Desolator. If you find yourself in games where you go Battle Fury, but your Desolator doesn't come fast and you need to fight, you can just go for straight BKB. And because you're going for Mithril Hammer anyway first, that allows you to go into the BKB route if you need to. And he's just dead for a while. When he revives, he just wants to finish his items, right? Once you do get your Desolator, you have a pretty big timing where you have a lot of damage. Battle Fury isn't like a big timing because it just allows you to farm faster for your next item. And here he gets jumped, but you can always use your Phantom Strike on your teammates to get out. And that's exactly what he did in this engagement. They went on him, but he uses Phantom Strike, gets out, all good in the hood. And here he's just lingering on the outskirts of the team fight, 
And then when a hero is like about 40%, that's the time he actually decides to jump in. Because when you jump in, your your spells are going to be on cooldown. So he's always waiting for his allies to be able to protect him first, right? Give him like a lair to go in, and then he jumps in when the enemy has low health. Phantom Assassin is not a hero where you're going to want to jump in when the enemy has full health, unless you're going on a support that you can burst, for sure. And now that they actually pick someone off mid lane and they have a Death Slater, they go straight into the Roshan Pit, collect the Aegis, Perfect timing for Phantom Assassin. The moment you have Deso, you can actually do Roshan with your team very easily. And that's what you want. You want this Aegis so you have more opportunities to jump into the team fights. So here he sees a Rubik, tries to jump in, but he has Remnant, he gets out. And now because he has that Aegis, he's able to get into the team fights much easier. He even picks up a Desolator with his mid laner's bottle. He even asks for that. It's very good on Phantom Assassin. Let's you burst even course quite easily. And now that you have the Aegis, you have the Deso Battle Fury, you're in a position in the game where you're the one who can th start threatening people, right? At this point, he's no longer farming defensively. He's actually farming aggressively, but also applying pressure to the enemy. And you can see what he did by taking the tier 2 and pushing here. He forced everybody back to the base. And when, once you do that, you can just go back and you can start hitting creeps. So you can look at net worth. His net worth is so high already. 13,000 net worth. And this one's not even a game where the PA had a very easy time in his lane or was able to lane long, had to get kicked out of his lane around 8 minutes. And with the Aegis and the Deso, he just goes from tower to tower, help his allies take objectives at this point. Because you got to give back to your team, right? Your team gave you a lot of space when you got your Battle Fury and you're farming up here into your Deso. And now it's time to give back. And after the Deso, go straight for the BKB. Perfect item, right? With PA, you want to go for the... These two are like super important, going for Deso and the Black King Bar. Especially in this game where there's so many disables on the enemy side. Another build you could go for is SNY and Satanic. But in those builds, you technically don't go for Battle Fury. It's just too many smaller items. So you're just going for the BKB after Battle Fury Deso. And still continuing with the towers, right? That you can take. And now that he's got the BKB... He's going to feel also more comfortable to, to jump into the team fights. And let's take a look here in this clash what's going to happen. He's actually, look at the way he's positioned. He's actually trying to find the supports first. He sees a low HP Wraith King, doesn't mind jumping him. He still has the Aegis, so there's no problem even if he goes into dark map. So after BKB, you can go for Basher into Abyssal or you can go for Satanic, which gives you sustain. A status resistance. If we take a look at his talents, he actually goes for the 12 damage talent, which is very good. I think it's a lot better than the HP talent. It allows you to farm faster, also do more damage off your crits. And then level 15, he goes for the spell steal. I feel like 90% of the time, most pro players do go for the spell steal talent. I think it's better as well. Uh, gives you more sustain in the clashes. You don't really need that extra cleave. You already have Battle Fury. Anyway. And even if you don't go Battle Fury, like 25% cleave is not a whole lot. Here he walks up into the high gun, he has a BKB so he's not too afraid of the clashes. He's actually getting stun locked pretty hard, pops the BKB, turns around, is actually going for the Wraith King. He could have went for the Rubik and killed them all first, but he notices that his team allies were there. Maybe he felt like it would have been okay that his allies will be able to kill the Rubik, but he does kill the Wraith King first. Now he's getting disabled up, but he has quite a bit of sustain. So when he jumps in and crits, he gets a lot of HP back from that 12% lifesteal. Kills off the Wraith King, goes for the next target. And also Satanic is a great item against Axe. You don't get stunned for long and you also have all this lifesteal available for you. And this hero is a beast at taking objectives. He actually forgot his uh, Paladin Sword there. I think he definitely should have got that. That would have been really nice for him. You might have not seen it. And they're just going straight into the high ground because three heroes are dead. Very nice. Now they get a Rax. He feels really good, right? And you can see PA's net worth. Like, all game has been climbing like crazy because of how fast you can kill creep waves with the Battle Fury. And how much power you have in this team fight. So here, as you can see, Axe jumps the PA. So here, Axe jumps the PA. And they can't even do, like, so much damage because he's life-stealing, right? Even though there's a Blade Mill on the Axe. And he's so tanky with this build-up as well. You got the BKB and the Reaver. Gives you so much HP. And he's even able to kill the Axe all by himself. Before the BKB runs out, he does jump out of the team fight because he knows the enemy is coming. Waits on the outskirts again for his cooldowns to be up to be able to jump in when they're low health. Axe jumps him again. Doesn't matter. 
has that life steal, has that high HP pull, and here waits for his allies to stun the enemy before he jumps once in again. So again, with a hero like PA, you want to dagger, jump in, get out after you kill someone, wait for your next cooldowns, wait, wait for some heroes to be low health, and then jump in once again. And you're always like going in and out of the clashes as a hero like PA. And that's what she's really good at. He's a true assassin. That's what this hero is. Phantom Assassin is a true assassin. Always going in and out of the clashes. You don't want to just stand there and keep attacking when your spells are on cooldown. You want to go back a little bit, see the vision of the fights, see your better opportunities, and then go in once again. It's a very good, solid game of Phantom Assassin. Nothing too flashy, nothing spectacular that you need to do in this game. A very solid gameplay. Just doing what you need to do as a PA and helping your team out. It's a really nice game. And this build up is very good too, right? As we can see. So you go Power Treads, Power Treads, Battle Fury, Desolator, then a BKB. And then after that, you can either go for Abyss or Satanic, depending on the game. Whether you need st the status resistance or you need more disables. So. Thank mm -hmm. you.